doesn't love smashing enemies with a big sword? So in this three-part tutorial, we're gonna look at how to do just that. We'll start with creating some animations for sword swinging, we'll move to dealing damage to enemies, and finally we'll polish it up with a little bit of screen shake, animation, knockback effect, and a health counter. Let's get started. Before we start, there's just a couple of things you're gonna need. First off, you're gonna need an enemy who has a collider to detect collisions with you. And secondly, you'll need a player who has a rigid body, collider, and the ability to move around. If you're looking at my setup, you'll notice that my player is separated from his sprite. I just do that because I like to make all animations on the sprite so that if I'm doing anything with movement, it doesn't mess up my player who handles movement through the parent sprite. Secondly, you'll notice that I have a player feet item here and that just handles my ground check. So you don't necessarily need to add that. All right, let's get going here. We're gonna begin by setting a few things up in Unity. First off, I'm gonna create a new game object and I'm gonna make this one a child of the sprite since the sprite is what handles my animations. And I'm gonna call this new object my sword hand. Secondly, I'm gonna create a, another object. And for this one, I'm actually gonna drag in a sword sprite. So you will need some sort of a sprite you can use as your weapon. Now, what I wanna do at this point, I'll zoom in a little bit here, and I'm gonna move the sword over kind of by my hand. Um, and I'm gonna make the sword a child of the sword hand. Now, the reason we do this is because I want to be able to swap in different items as my game grows, so change spears or axes, that sort of thing. And so I'm going to actually do all of my animating by moving the sword hand. That way, if I swap out a different weapon at some point, I can just change this game object here and use the same animations to move those items. All right, so at this point, I'm going to go to my sprite and I want to create my sword slash animation. So I'm going to click on my animation window if you don't have this already, you can go up to the top, go window, head down to animation and select animation. Now we're gonna be creating a new animation here. So while you're clicked on the object you wanna animate, in my case, I'm animating my sprite. That's where all my animations happen. I'm gonna click on this box and go to create new clip. I'm gonna name this one sword slash. And we'll have a new timeline here. Now, if you already have your own animation that includes a weapon, you aren't gonna have to worry about this next part. Things will go pretty smoothly for you. However, I'm gonna do something a little more complicated that will enable us to swap out other weapons in the future. And that is to actually animate the movement of the weapon itself. And my sword slash is a three frame animation. So I'm just gonna grab those three frames and put them up here. And I want my sword slash just to last for roughly 20 frames or so. And you'll notice here now that when I start my, you can see my player kind of swinging his arm through the sword motion. The sword's a little in the way, but you get the idea. Now with the basic frames put in, one thing we need to remember to do is to grab our sword slash animation and unclick the loop time. That way he will only slash once, not multiple times. And now if you're doing this the way I am, which is a little more complicated, um, we'll also have to animate the sword movement itself. So I'm gonna head back up into my animation timeline here click on my sprite again, as that's where the animation is happening. One thing that's important to remember is make sure you've got the correct animation. Mine's defaulting to my walk animation, so I'm just gonna reselect sword slash, hit record. And now what we wanna do is go to our sword hand. Remember, we don't wanna move the sword because if we move the sword hand, we'll be able to apply this to all weapons. And I simply wanna put it in the place that I want it to be at the start. So I'm gonna just kinda tilt this back a bit. We'll then want to walk through each of our animations, moving to the sword to where it should be. Now, one of the things that makes this really complex is that at the moment, this isn't going to look very good. When I hit play, <laughs> the sword is swinging, but you'll notice it's not quite matching my um, player's hand. And that's just because it automatically moves between the two points. And in this case, we don't want that. So the way to fix that is simply go to the first frame, select the position and rotation elements, copy them, and then make sure that they go all the way until right before you want the change to happen. That way we'll stick with this same nice animation and it'll switch all at once when the hand switches. And you'll just wanna do that for each of these. This is annoying, but the nice thing is that it's gonna give us that customizability of being able to add extra items in the end. So now when I hit play, there we go, looking pretty good. 
Now one option for you at this point is to decide whether or not you want to add this to your other animations. Now I already have a walk animation for example set up for my player and I'm just going to take the time to actually add the sword to his walk animation so that if his sword is actually on him then when we run the sword animation he'll actually um, animate. So I'm just going to hit record and go through that process. So with those animations ready, we can now make sure that they're set up in our animator. Again, if you don't have your animator currently loaded for your player, um, you can find that by going window down to animation and selecting animator. Now you'll notice that um, my animator is um, pretty busy, but don't need to worry too much about that at this moment. Um, but the big thing is that we want it so that when our sword slash plays, once it's finished, we're gonna have to have it transition back into some other form of animation. So to do that, I'm just going to right click on Sword Slash and make it transition. And I want him to either go back to his idle animation or back to his walk animation. Now for me, this has already been set up in my code. I detect whether to walk or idle based on my horizontal movement. Um, if you have a different setup from your game, you can do that here. Now if you don't want to have any specific transition and you just want it so that after he's done sword slashing, he goes back to his normal default state, you can just put no conditions on. You could be done here right now. However, I do want mine to choose between idle or walk. So I'm going to click on that transition here. I'll hit the plus button. And in my case, he's just going to go to idle if his horizontal movement is less than 0.5, which essentially just means I'm not pushing the move button. And he'll go to walk if his horizontal movement is greater than 0.5. And that's all we have to do in here. We'll call the sword slash from our script. We just need somewhere for our player to go after he sword slashes. Otherwise, he'll stay in that animation. Now, depending on how much you've decided to animate, you should have an idle at this point, like mine. You should be able to walk with the sword. And there should be a slash, though at the moment, that's not actually set up to do anything. <laughs> You'll notice my um, jump is also set up really funny, and that's just because I haven't bothered to animate it with the sword yet. All right, let's get that sword slash happening. So to do that, we're going to need to create a script. We're going to right click, go create, C sharp script, and I'm going to call this one melee attack. All right, so do, setting this up is actually pretty easy to do. Just a few lines of code to get that sword swinging. So, so first up, we're going to make a public reference to our animator, and I'll just call this one player anim. I'm not even going to need the start function at this point. And in our update, all I want to do is make it so that we check to see if there's been an input of a button. And in this case, I'm going to check get button down. And the get button down that I'm going to be looking for is called fire one. Now, if you're not familiar with the get button down, this is using Unity's input system. And if we pop quickly back into Unity, go to edit, project settings, we can find these all over in our input manager. Now here you will have a whole bunch of different axes that you can look at, and there's lots of different options. I've typed fire one, and that command will be called anytime I push the K button. Now you could change that if you wanted. I think it's defaults to um, left control or something like that but you could use L or some other button. I like K because it just feels good on my keyboard. So now Unity, because it's in our update, will constantly be checking to see if I have pushed the K button. We'll add our curly brackets. And all that we want to do here is we want to talk to our animator. We want to tell it to play a set animation. And in this case, mine was called sword slash. It is case sensitive, so make sure that your spelling is exact here. And then all we need to do to set that up is select our player character. We're going to want to add melee attack. And you'll notice we have a box here for our animator. My animator's on my sprite, so I'm just going to take that sprite and drag it into the box there so that I can now talk to my animator. Now when I get in the game, anytime I push the K button, my sword is slashing. Now at the moment, it's not going to deal any damage to the enemy. And I can spam it as fast as I want, but those are problems we'll fix in the next tutorial. We've got lots of work left to do, but that will happen next time. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Thanks for watching.